Welcome to the Savvy Property Investors Podcast, a weekly show that delivers the best hard-hitting property industry news, business advice, and talks that will get you ascending in the real estate industry. Now, here's your host, the amazing award-winning property and business coach, best-selling author, and serial entrepreneur, Miss Sapphire Gray. Welcome to this show. Our guest this week is Claire Ford. Claire is an author, speaker, coach, healer, tutor, and parent who is very passionate about ensuring that children are switched on. Learners assessing their natural gift and abilities and talents to unlock their true potential and live purposefully. As her unique skill set to support families around the world, her passion and enthusiasm is getting children and young people motivated learning how to be the catalyst for developing their clever curriculum in the Switch On Academy. Claire is going to share how to maintain um, sanity during the summer holidays, which we have coming up shortly. I'm Sophia Gray, so let's get started. Claire, thank you so much for joining us today. (laughs) How are you doing? (laughs) Excellent. (laughs) I'm looking forward to, to really getting this under... The questions, because I want to know how to maintain sanity during the summer holidays, despite my kids are all grown now. I do have um, young grandchildren, so it would be really nice to get a full understanding of how you actually do that. (laughs) Before we start, can you kindly define what is sanity is actually is? (laughs) Well, I think, Sophia, um, it's probably easier to define what insanity is. (laughs) Right. And um, you've probably heard the expression uh, that Tony Robbins uses, which is actually taken from a quote from Einstein. And Einstein says that insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Right. Mm -hmm. Therefore, sanity is the opposite of that. Sanity is choosing to get different results by taking a different action. Brilliant. I I totally get that. And yeah, sometimes we do have this repetitive behavior. So doing the opposite to that repetitive behavior is a good thing. Brilliant. So what motivated you actually to, to build this academy, the Switch On Academy? Yeah, so basically, I've been tut- I've been in the teaching industry for over 20 years and um, tutoring for the last five. And certainly during the lockdown over the last year and a half, what was happening, Sophia, was that many families were coming to me, many kids were coming to me, and they were switched off, right? They were switched off learners. They were unengaged, unmotivated, unenthusiastic. The parents were tearing their hair out. The kids were bored, Right. And I'm like, I've got to do something about this. So like we said, we need to do the opposite when it's not working, right? So I'm like, okay, I need to switch these kids back on. And that's why I created the Switched On Academy. That's brilliant. And do you have like core pillars that you actually teach within the academy? Yes, so I do. I have basically three main pillars. Mm -hmm. I have the core pillar, which is the life skills. Um, that's all about, um, obviously English and maths, reading and writing, but it's also things like nutrition, entrepreneurship, financial literacy, right? For me, these are the core skills which aren't taught in schools. Um, and then in the clever curriculum, I have this emotional pillar, the emotional quotient, raising emotional literacy, giving people the words they need to describe feelings and emotions so that they can become resilient they can um, express their needs, right? It helps to raise confidence. It's all that extra piece, again, which isn't being taught at school. And then in the final element of the switched on methodology, the final pillar is the um, spiritual well-being piece, which is definitely not taught in schools. Mm-hmm. So this has got nothing to do with, with religion. This this covers every, every, every religion. It's about our children and teenagers understanding that they have a higher self. They have a divine power, right? Mm-hmm. That they have an intuitive voice. Um, and so it goes into all of that kind of stuff. So that um, what we're doing is we're looking at the whole person in the in a holistic way, but we're yeah. looking at mental, emotional, and spiritual. That's what we do. And 
our viewers, our listeners uh, might be wondering what's the connection between what we teach in the investment side of our business to how we're connecting back with you as our guest speaker today. And it's all about building entrepreneurship from the young up. And you talked about financial literacy as well. And that's key to any developing business, because if you're not financially literate, you are not really building out a robust business. And what you're doing is a really clever way of introducing it from young so that when they become adults, they can make informed decisions about how they're going, whether they do want a job or whether they want to set up their own business. So I think you're giving an all rounder to to your your students in in informing them what they need to do to equip themselves for um, building out their life lifeline and and assets towards that. That's That's brilliant. It's putting those foundations in place. And it's really, I feel that really I'm providing a springboard so yeah. that they can jump off in whatever yeah. direction they choose to go in that is aligned with what they're here to do and become, right? Yeah. Not, and what, yeah. not what they think they should do, yeah. not what Absolutely. parents are telling them they should do, not what society, culture, you know, is telling them they should do. It's about them internalizing looking inside rather than outside and then fully expressing themselves because they've got all these tools in their toolbox and i think that's the core thing here is teaching from young because that when we become adults and then we want to spring off and do our own businesses we haven't even got that support of what we should have had when we was younger in school and i think that's really needed to be across every curriculum within the mainstream schooling systems is to teach what you are actually teaching. So I think you're doing a marvellous job. So well done on that. Brilliant. Thank you. So what do you think needs to happen to change? You know, we just talked about what needs um, your pillars. What do you think needs to change in the educational system to make this, what you're doing, be more apparent and more out there? Yeah, I think the thing is, I think there's lots of um, key takeaways that we we have from this COVID pandemic. Um, And I've been liaising with lots of, um, you know, educators and people high up in government over on Clubhouse. There's all these people saying, what are we going to do next? Right. We all know the education system is not up to scratch. It's antiquated. You know, it was uh, designed in the Victorian era to get people into factories blue collar, white collar jobs, that's not necessarily the future for our children. So something needs to change. And there are certain elements which I am introducing in my way of teaching, which I call hybrid, which is a bit like a coaching model where there's some self-study, but then there's that accountability, there's that support system in place with professional qualified tutors who know what they're doing. And, you know, here's the thing, Sophia. Children don't need to go to school to learn. All the answers are on here. True. And that's right? our They don't need to sit in a classroom. You can listen to a podcast when you're walking in a field. True. You can read a book when you're lying on a beach. Yeah. You do not need to go to school to learn, right? Mm-hmm. So we need to be able to go, okay, so it's not – um that so it's like how do children learn how do they decide what they want to learn how do they decide when they want to learn it because it has to be relevant for them at that time that's That's what needs to change so it's a massive paradigm shift but we have already dipped our toe in the water and had a taste of with this homeschooling with this home education okay, these are some stuff that they're being sent that they have to do, that they should do. But let's look at the person in front of us and actually ask them, what are you interested in? Yeah. What do you want to do? What's relevant for you right now? Very true. That's very true. And even through the holidays, even though, as I said, I have grown adult um, daughters, but I do have grandchildren. And through um, last year, what I did was d- done an arts and craft um sort of tutoring so I made it fun so I told them to create clothing upcycling clothing creating bags designing um houses that's what I'm in so I got them to design houses and they found that really enjoyable and and some of the young people that were involved went on to develop um doing other videos and things like that so it got them thinking about doing other things out of the traditional way of learning and it then made them want to then learn because they knew it could lead on to other things. So I absolutely get that. 
So what do you, um, basically, how do we switch children back onto like the reading and writing aspects of things as well? Yes. Well, I'm very keen to um, to maintain these core skills. You know, there are there are there is a, there is a school of thought, uh, mm -hmm. no schoolers who just say that children will learn reading and writing, you know, by osmosis when yeah. they need to learn it. Yeah. I, I personally don't agree with that. I've mm -hmm. taught reading and writing and phonics and spelling and everything for many, many years. And I know that there are systems which you can show children, which when they've got it, means that they can unlock their reading and writing skills. But the way we switch them back on is by making it relevant, purposeful and fun. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Relevant, purposeful and fun. And the way that I did that last year was, um, so I was getting messages from mums going, oh, this grammar's so boring. Like, you know, my daughter already did it last week. The school has sent the same thing home again, you know, or the, or the other extreme. We don't understand a word the teachers are saying. We've never heard of a fronted adverbial. What's a complex sentence? I've never used this in my life. Like, you know, right. So there's all this confusion around the grammar and all of that. So the thing is. What I did was I, I came up with a course idea, which I'm running again this year, and I'm creating into a whole year's worth of work, um, which is where the children actually get to write a story using a framework that I show them, mm -hmm. but they also get to publish it in their very own book. Excellent. Because that is the motivation. Absolutely. That's the purpose behind writing a story so that people read it, right? Absolutely. That's a brilliant <laughs> idea. Absolutely brilliant idea. And, you know, a lot of kids out there, even a lot of adults don't have confidence. So how do you help build that confidence? I mean, you just talked about um, using what they're writing, turning it into books that will absolutely boost their confidence. So what else do you, I mean, tools do you use to boost people's confidence as well? That's exactly it, right? So, um, I mean, for example, it's about really listening to the person who's in front of you, seeing what kind of a learner they are, seeing the way their mind works and, and giving them, you know, the same for us adults, it's trying, it's breaking things down into small trunk, chunks and persevering and trying and allowing mistakes, Absolutely. allowing failure, yeah. allowing time to come back round and look at it again. Repetition is the key to mastery. Absolutely. Learning is not a once and done thing. Yeah. Right? I mean, with myself, it's like I, I'm dyslexic and I publicly say that. And I lacked confidence as a child in school. And for me, it was when someone recognised that I was dyslexic and I got tested, I felt confident that I now could say to people, I'm dyslexic, so my learning and my reading and it's, it's not on par with somebody else that is not dyslexic, but I was able to confidently say it. Therefore, it pulled up my confidence because I was open about it. Yes. And then I could take my time and learn when I need to learn things. So it's a brilliant way of actually looking at how to boost, boost confidence within young people as well, is to recognise the difficulties that they are having and actually work on those with them to give them the confidence that they know that they can go on to do other things. That's exactly. brilliant. Exactly that. I mean, I don't know if I've got time to tell you about a young lady who came to me. Um, lovely, lovely girl called Mia. And she she was she's 15. She came to do GCSE maths. Right. And I could tell as this was just before lockdown when I could have face to face. Mm -hmm. And I could tell when she turned up at my door like she was so scared. She was like a, she was not quite shaking, but she was literally frozen with fear. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Okay, I've come across this a lot, especially with maths, right? So because I'm a quantum energy healer, I'm a well-being coach, I, I value the emotional well-being above the grades, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to chat to this girl, find out what's going on. So, so quickly, you know, said to her, first of all, well done for even getting here. Mm. Because that meant she'd asked for help. She'd been courageous to show up even though she felt scared inside. Yeah. So acknowledging the fact she was even standing on my doorstep, right? Yeah. Before she'd step foot in the door in the house. Right. And then I'm like, right, come and sit down. Tell me what's going on. What's going on for you with maths? And then it all came out how for five years she'd been hiding at the back of the class. 
too um, afraid to put her hand up to ask a question, too afraid to put her hand up to answer a question because of the public humiliation of getting it wrong. Um, she'd been self-harming. She'd been um, having panic attacks, right? She'd been in the bottom of her class, the bottom three children in her class for five years. Wow. Right? So the fact that she found herself sitting in front of me was already a huge gargantuan step yeah. like going yeah. on to the moon for this girl right yeah. so of course i wasn't teaching her maths in the first lesson i gave her strategies to manage her panic attacks and her anxiety even in my first lesson and so she's like oh actually i do feel better and then we talked about you know why she was worried about getting things wrong we walked about all all of that stuff we had a little go at things you know i asked her what she knew she said she didn't know anything she can't remember anything i'm like that's fine are you happy to start at the beginning she said yes right we literally started with two times table right Excellent. 15 start mm -hmm. with two times table and then I could see that that cortisol, that adrenaline that was wanting to make her run away or freeze, it went down, you know? Children can't learn if they're scared. True, very right? true. So I had to lower all of that. And then after a few weeks of, of working together, you know, she made so much progress. I was giving her little hacks. She was like, actually, this is so easy. Why has no one told me this before, yeah. right? And then I got this text from her. And she's like, Claire, oh my goodness, I've got marks back from my maths test. I was like, okay. She's like, I got 43%. I was hey. like, okay. Cause I'm like, I'm not sure that my students don't, you know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. this is good. like what's going on here? And I said, okay, tell me a bit more about that. She said, Claire, she said, I used to get 3%. Wow. That's brilliant. Right? Absolutely brilliant. And so now she said, actually, she, and then another time she said, do you know what? She said, I actually enjoy going to my maths lessons. I was like, oh, really fell off my chair. <laughs> yeah, that's a brilliant achievement. And that's that's what kids need, you know, is yeah. just somebody that believes in them and shows them ways of doing things that simplifies it in their head. Yes. They feel I can conquer anything just by yes. doing a, in a simple form. That's excellent. Uh, uh, another strange little thing that happened because of that, one day she came to me and she said, she said, you know what? She said, I've done really well in my history exam. I'm like, Okay, <laughs> well, that's great. What, what, tell me what, what's relevant. She said, Claire, she said, it's because you taught me to tell the time. Oh, excellent. Right? Because lots of young people don't, can't read yeah. digital clocks, um, analog clocks. We've all yeah. got digital everywhere. Yeah. So she couldn't work out how to plan the time for her essays. And once she understood how to read a clock, this actually impacted how she did in all her other subjects. That's excellent. I would Simple never have things. even known yeah. that. Yeah. Simple little things. It really does have an impact on people. That's excellent. I'm, I'm so pleased for her as well. And how's she doing now? She's brilliant. She feels confident going up to the shop because she knows she can count the change. She knows she can work out what she can buy. Right. She used to be embarrassed to go to the cinema and stuff with her friends because she couldn't work out the money right right so it's actually impacted on a on a social level as well that she feels confident to go to the shop to have conversations to buy stuff she knows what's going on she can read bus timetables she can go and meet her friends yeah. she's not That's standing around for hours these little things being sort of a real tool that is needed yes in everyday living that's yes. brilliant absolutely brilliant thank you for sharing that story with us so moving slightly around what where we've just been coming from, we've just come out of a pandemic situation. We'll somewhat come out of it. How can one best um, prepare, like if we're taking our kids now, summertime, yeah. and they're going to be at home with, with us? How can yeah. parents best prepare for that? Well, I think obviously it depends on the age of your children. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really important to, to plan. So I love Stephen Covey's, you know, failing to plan is planning to fail, right? Yeah. It's important to have a plan, but mm -hmm. within that, it's important to also be flexible. Mm -hmm. And let me explain what I mean. When my son started going out, he was going to, um, you know, parties and things again. He was able to go around friends' house and all of that. We were all really excited. We're like, this is brilliant. We're getting back to normal. 
Now, what happened with one of his friends is they actually had massive social anxiety at this party mm. and they had to be picked up early. So here's the thing. It's not like you can just timetable in and go, well, you know, I'm sending, you know, Pete to swimming and I'm sending mm -hmm. Alison to tennis and I'm sending. You can send them, but don't think you've necessarily got loads of free time ahead of you because they might not be coping with this situation right now. Mm. There is massive social anxiety for all our children, especially going into groups with other children that they don't know, that they haven't even been in a classroom bubble with. True. So it's really important that, yes, by all means, schedule stuff in, but know that it might not happen. Yeah. And always prepare as well, because if in the event that happens, so, I, you know, I would say charming in saying, well, be at home, do something at home in the event that you have to pick them up. So you're not booked like going out for a restaurant. That's it. That's it. You, that's it. You don't want to be on a spa day, you know, with half your nails painted and your neck <laughs> like, oh, oh God, I've got to go get kids. No. Yeah. Like, make sure that that you, you've, you're, you're flexible and you're available. Yeah. And I would say kind of build things up build things up gently. So even if you leave them around at a friend's house, first of all, just for an hour and you literally go and get a coffee, and that's it. That's and then right. you can build it up to staying for lunch kind of thing. And you think, oh, I can go to the gym and then yes. get them, you know, <laughs> and, and kind of build it up because we're not used to being in other people's houses. Yeah, we're not no more. Definitely. And we're not used to having other people in our houses. Yeah, yeah that's so very true. So be mindful as well of yourself, of your personal space, of your own home, inviting yeah. all and sundry in because it's the school holidays. Yeah. You might get overwhelmed, think, oh, my God, all these people in my house, I wish they'd go away. <laughs> right? So what are some of the activities that you could actually plan in your own home or that you can involve other young people with? that doesn't feel so overwhelming? What would be some of those activities? Yeah, again, it depends on your children and what they're interested in. The first thing mm. is ask your child. And if you don't know, just observe them playing. Just observe them, don't ask them. Just say, go off and do your thing. And then rather than ignoring them and doing a hundred things that you need to do, yeah. actually just pop your head around the corner and see what is it that they're doing? Is it yeah. arts and crafts? Is it making jewelry? Is it painting? Is it drawing? Is it coloring? Is it gaming? Is it um, listening to music? Right? Is it jumping around on their bed like a trampoline? What is it yeah. that they're doing? Right? True. So and how can you incorporate some of those summer activities into the educational aspects of things as well? Because as much as our kids may not want to learn, but it's like eating vegetables, we kind of try and get into something <laughs> that they don't recognize it is. That's so it. That's it. The secret spaghetti bolognese sauce. <laughs> I love that. Um, how can we disguise educational well, activities? Here's the thing. Education, learning doesn't just happen between nine o'clock and three o'clock. Yeah. And learning doesn't just happen in a classroom. As we said, learning can happen anywhere. So you can be out for a walk. The key is to ask curious questions. Observe, yeah. look around you. I um, told ladies in my community over lockdown to do something called the window activity, right? Because we weren't allowed out. Yeah. So what you do is you literally cozy up with a blanket with your children and you look out the window and you have a conversation about what you can see, what you can hear, what you can sense, why you think it's there, what's changing, why is the sky blue, why are the clouds moving fast, yeah. why can I hear the birds when, they're so, when I can't see them? That's really Ask good. questions, yeah. right? It's science. Brilliant. So join us after the break with more insights um, from myself and Claire. This week's episode of the Savvy Property Investors Podcast was brought to you by our sponsor, the Savvy Women Group. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed today's show, head over to our website, www.savvywomen.co.uk to gain access to our free resources and more insights about our guest speaker today. Remember, we make your business our business so you can unlock your full potential and improve your quality of life. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us, Claire. I'd like to ask you, jumping into questions again, I'd like to ask you, um, with families being at home, with a buzz of activities underway for the summer holidays, 
how can we avoid being consumed with events of the day? Like mm. how do we maintain our sanity? Which activities would you suggest that parents take on? Mm. Well, again, every family is different, right? Some people are very sporty. Uh, I think what you've got to do is you've got to look at the children you've got in your house mm -hmm. and you've got to look at your strengths as parents and carers and extra family members, right? So if one kid loves football, but you hate football, get somebody else to do the football, right? Right? If you prefer baking, you bake with all the cousins and the people who love baking and yeah. somebody else can go out and do the biking, right? So yeah. divide and conquer, divide and conquer and play to your strengths. Because if you're enjoying it, if you're passionate, if you're having fun, yeah. that's gonna, that's gonna, um, they're gonna feel that. And yeah. they're gonna enjoy that. They're gonna remember that activity. So here's the thing, right? My son, Oscar, one summer I asked him, I said, Oscar, I said, and, and this was before lockdown. So we'd done loads of stuff. We'd done day trips to London, friends mm -hmm. over, we'd had a trip over to France, um, you know, all sorts of things, right? Activities, sailing, all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. I'd put him into clubs, left, right and center. I'm like, Oscar, what did you enjoy most over the summer holidays? This was just before we're going back to school. His answer shocked me, Sophia. This is what he said. And this is a learning for all parents yeah. out there who are spending loads of money. He said, mum, he said, the thing I enjoyed the most was going round to Sissinghurst Castle, which is near me. It's a National Trust property, beautiful property. Mm -hmm. He said, we went to Sissinghurst Castle. It's a lovely lake. Took a picnic blanket. We sat under a tree. We took... Oh. We took our books, our journals, our drawings and, you know, picnic and we just chatted. He said, I loved that day we went to Sissinghouse Castle. Wow. Well, it, it nearly made me cry, Sophia, because that was like my easy day. That was like my, oh, I don't know what we're going to do today day. Right? <laughs> yeah. I was like, Fantastic. what? After all that stuff I've planned, all that <laughs> stuff I spent money on. In my head, I'm thinking, you like that? Yeah. I'm like, wow, this is a learning for everyone. Yeah. Our children and our grandchildren value our presence. Yeah. Not how much money we spend. Absolutely. How much time we spend. And by time, I don't mean, oh, I've spent six weeks with my kids. Yeah, no. How Quali much quality time? Yeah. Absolutely one-on-one -on -one time if you've got lots of children farm four off look after one yeah yeah it's true right? quality time it's because nice. we don't get that back and they remember that Absolutely. i thought you know that's the kind of day where you go home and have baked beans on toast and you think oh so yeah. that can't be bothered to cook yeah we love that day yeah and it's it's the old adage or the old saying people say keep it simple um, and I won't go on to say what the rest of it is because we're not that. But they do say just keep it simple. And I think sometimes kids appreciate the simplicity of things. Yes. I'm with mum, I'm with dad, and it, it just feels really good here. Yes. You know, I just, I've got their time, I've got their attention, we're doing something yes. together. And That's that goes on to me asking you about how does parents incorporate the us and the me time? Because as a parent, um, and a lot of, of my my members and clients are parents so you've got to carve out time for yourself yes. and you've then got to carve out time for your kids well how do you balance that then yeah so i have trainings um in my community called planning the week ahead and it talks exactly about this and the people would would think oh she's going to tell me you know how what english lessons to teach for the week no <laughs> not that we start off with your diary and you put in your non-negotiables and the non-negotiables are the way that you and your partner have to show up in order to make money to keep a roof over your children's head and put food on the table mm -hmm. they are non-negotiables yeah after that the next non-negotiable is factoring in time for yourself and factoring your partner's time in for him or herself mm -hmm. They're also non-negotiables. And you can discuss that. You can say, well, if I have Saturday morning, can you have Sunday morning sort of thing, mm -hmm. right? That can be open to shifting around and having a, a, a conscious conversation about. Mm -hmm. 
after that, you then look at where are the gaps in the calendar. And that's where you have family time or you divide and conquer and you have somebody takes the older ones, somebody takes the younger ones or whatever, right? Yeah. But the point is, once you know you can get your work done, and this is where then you might book your children into clubs, mm -hmm. or you might say to your friend, actually, can you have my two Monday and Tuesday and I'll have your ones on Wednesday and Thursday, right? Mm -hmm. Use your support network, ask for favors yeah. and give yeah. them back, but be, be intentional with your time. So when your kids are out at a friend's house, because you have to work, don't then procrastinate and do all the chores in the house because mm -hmm. that's your work time. That's right. And that's it's not coming back again. No, it definitely isn't. So you've got to be really intentional. You've got to be like a lioness. You've got, <laughs> you've got to be like, that's my time and I'm yeah. not giving it away to anyone else. Yeah. Or oh, boss lady in my case. I'm always talking about the boss ladies that I'm creating. And I always say it to them as well, have a diary, have a calendar where you're actually putting on that calendar me time That's and then right. it's me and my partner's time or me That's and my right. children's time right. so you have date nights you have those set That's out it. but the person at the helm of this is always about you the yes. woman because yes. she's got to carve out her time she's got to have time for herself to replenish to feel good to feed into the, the mainstream of the family That's right. like with the, the partner the husband you know They've got to have their time to feed back into the family. Right. As well as the young people, they've got to have their own individual time yes. as well. So, so Sophia, one of the things, you'll probably laugh, but one of the things I have in my diary, I literally schedule in lunch and a walk. I literally write it down. Because yep. here's the thing, if it's in my diary, it uh, gets done. It go. gets ticked off. Absolutely. If it's not in the diary, I can't guarantee I'm going to remember to do it. Isn't that terrible? It, it, I, I also do the same. I do lunch. I do. I actually put all my meal plans in my diary. Yes. I actually put my walk plans in the diary, yes. podcasts in the diary. Yes. I, yes. I do yes. all of these things because I know that is, I have to give myself back some time. So if it's scheduled, I won't overlap that with booking exactly. appointments and, and taking away from my time as well. And it, it just goes into the fold as well because even if you want personal time, you also have to schedule in. A babysitter we've yeah. just got through a pandemic and a lot of people are not going to just send their kids off to any and anybody and if you haven't got those grandparents that live nearby or those cousins or aunts how do you deal with a babysitter at this if during this time well you know that's a tricky one i mean my son used to babysit for for friends you know in the village for neighbors in the village um it might be very difficult. There might It might be that the young people who would have normally babysat for a bit of extra money because they haven't been out for a year and a half, they're yeah. like, sorry, I'm not babysitting, I'm going out partying, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, sure. babysitters might be hard to find. So really, you need to use somebody that you trust or you can use somebody that your friends have used that they trust. Or what you could do is you could put all the kids in one house for a sleepover yeah. And then you both families contribute towards the babysitter and you can kind of go out as a four, something like that. Yeah. So, you know, things like that. But use people that you know and trust. Um, you can't just have anybody in your house. Yeah. And, you know, I would also make sure if personally that they'd actually done a COVID test. True. Right. Like yeah. the babysitting thing is hard. I mean, I, I don't think necessarily that. It depends on different people's families. It depends on their children's needs, medical needs, if people are isolating. And that's a really difficult question to answer. Yeah. And it, it's got to be, it's got to feel right for you personally, because if you're out trying to have a nice time, but half your brain is still back at home going, oh my God, but what if he or she does this? Or what if that happens? Or what? You're not having a nice time. You're not actually present. So yeah. you're not really going out, to be honest. So if you're not happy about it, then don't do it. If you're not ready yet, if you don't know somebody you can trust, don't do it. And I always say pre-plan as well. This is all going back to, to really understanding how you're planning out your scheduling through the summer holidays to assist yourself in getting the best out of it for you and your children and your family. And I always say if you you can split, you were talking about splitting um, time. So, I, I for instance, I had a sister who we used to swap kids. That's so it. Like, 
<laughs> we had three weeks I had all the kids and then three weeks she had all the kids so I had a three weeks holiday no kids yeah you know? so you can actually split so if you pre-arrange and saying look I trust you so I'm going to give you a week holiday yeah I have yours and then you give me a week holiday you have mine That's but you it. have to pre-plan these things yeah. yes yeah. if it needs um for you to get tests done do that there's there's simple enough to have yeah and it needs to just sort of have a pre-meeting yeah uh, just to reassure each other and the children yeah. this is what's going to be happening so you're yeah. pre-planning so the kids are got the plan you've got the plan everyone's got the plan and you're yeah. working on that plan and as i say you can ease yourself in gently so it might be that you go around there just for a play date first of all and then another time you take them around there for lunch and then Absolutely. another time you take them around there for a bit of tea and a film night you know yeah. but you still come yeah. out and so you can ease in gently ease in gently it Perfect. does take some planning it's not going to be the same as it was pre pre-covid no definitely not we're, not we're in the new normal now and we've got to be mindful of that as well and sort of like if they're planning some summer holidays how can you incorporate if they they were fortunate to go abroad how can you incorporate some educational um pieces there as well Oh, well, I mean, there's loads you can do, you know, I mean, world schoolers, that's how they educate their children through travel, right? So this is a fantastic opportunity. I mean, there's so many things you can do, um, you know, just from the point of view of even time zones, like we're leaving England at this time, we're getting in the country at that time, but they're an hour ahead. So what time are we really getting there and all of that? Right. And then, of course, there's all the whole cultural stuff, visiting things, learning the language, learning the culture, understanding the music, understanding the, the food, the nutrition. You know, um, I mean, there's so many things, you know, theatre, like if there's any festivals going on, you know. And so traveling is a fantastic way to understand history, culture, all those kinds of things. Brilliant. Um, can you share with us, you said that you've got a free product that you give to parents. What is that, that product that you offer? Yeah, so I've got a couple of things. I've got um, a product which is um, the seven top tips to getting your child to become a switched on learner. Excellent. Um, so, so that's really good uh, to use. And then I've got a couple of little courses over the summer. If people are having a staycation, um, mm. You know, and they think, oh, I just, you know, haven't got the babysitter. I haven't got the family support. I need the kids to do something so that I can just switch off for a bit. Yeah. Um, I'm doing a meditation, movement and mindset course for children. Oh, excellent. Right. So they're learning all these skills. So although it's a course, yeah, it's not academic. I mean, it, it's 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 the emotional piece. Yes. It's not the academic piece. So they're I, learning to be quiet. They're learning to self-regulate. They're learning to breathe, understand, return to the breath. Um, and then they're learning also to embody that in the way that they move. There's a yoga teacher who's doing the the um, the course with me. Yeah. Um, and then at the end, they're creating their own affirmation cards. So it's all that growth mindset, positivity, turning the negative into a positive all of that you know fantastic Brilliant. tools to have in your toolkit from a child i mean we're only learning this stuff now right yes it's true it's true <laughs> so can you share with us any parting comments or any advice that you have yes um so one of my phrases that i love to use is this if things aren't quite going the way you're wanting <laughs> right mm. for want of a better word and not swearing um <laughs> what you can do and i use this phrase a lot and i've done po other podcasts on this you can check them out it's called model the behavior you want to see mm. if you want your children to be calm you can't be going around the house slamming doors like a screaming banshee using yeah. all the words under the sun and then expect them to be calm and quiet yeah true if you want your kids to eat healthily you can't sit in front of the telly eating pizza, chocolate and glugging down the wine. That's very true. Right? True. Yeah. So if you're, if you're seeing things in your children's behaviour that you think, oh, don't really like that. Like, where's that come from? Look I'm sorry, you. but the chances are it's probably come from you. Yeah, it's true. It's very true. <laughs> it's probably a learned behaviour, right? Absolutely. So, but the, the good news is that means we can do something about it. That's very true. 
That's very we can true. do something about it. So, you know, if you want your children to be more active, you need to ask yourself, am I being more active? Or do yeah. they just see me sitting on my chair in front of my computer all day? Brilliant. Love that tip. And and a lot of parents need to really take responsibilities for, for their behaviours because what were the reflection that our kids see and they will definitely mirror that. Thank you so much for being our guest today, Claire. We really appreciated your your input and your knowledge on on children and education and basically using the switched on method you know i really appreciate that how can people get hold of you for further information and your your downloads and your courses that you have yes yeah, so the easiest way is just to go to switchedonglobal.com um there's the courses that are on there there's links where people can book in a call with me um so that's the easiest way have a nose around there browse around there there's a, a tab with free resources all the interviews experts downloads all of that free and then there's also some courses on there that people can choose as well if they want them so that's the best place to go Brilliant. Do you have social media? What's your social media handle? Oh, yes, I'm there. I'm all over Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, uh, you know, so just look for Switched On or Claire Ford Switched On and you'll find me. Excellent. Thank you, audience, for joining us this week on the Savvy Property Investors Show. This brings a close um, to our show this week. But as you can see, education is key to our, maintaining our children's lives. Having someone like Claire educating our kids in a different way, but a meaningful way that they be able to grow confidence in what they're learning and how they behave. Remember, you are the reflection on your children. So if you want to learn more about Claire and what she has to offer, please do go to her social me uh, media handles. Please hit her up on her website. And I'm sure she would love to, you know, take this further and have a discussion with you. Don't forget to rate our show, subscribe and review. Download the show, um, show as well and feel free to share. You can also get us on our social media handles. That's 50 Savvy Women. Or you can contact us if you want to send an email with any comments. You can contact us at contact at SavvyWomen.co.uk or podcast um, SavvyWomen.co.uk. It's been lovely sharing this stage with you today, Claire. Have a lovely day, listeners, and we'll see you next week for another show again. This week's episode of the Savvy Property Investors Podcast was brought to you by our sponsor, the Savvy Women Group. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed today's show, head over to our website, www.savvywomen.co.uk to gain access to our free resources and more insights about our guest speaker today. Remember, we make your business our business so you can unlock your full potential and improve your quality of life.